Hello, in this video, I'm going to be introducing how we can create animations. Um, not so much that we want to have kind of these just cool, splashy graphics, but um, often animations can be used when we need an extra dimension for our data. Um, for example, we could have a geographic map and, and show how things evolve over time. Uh, now, it turns out that uh, animations uh, are not as tricky as you might think. Um, here I'm on the Wikipedia page for animations, and you can see I have this example of a bouncing ball on the right. And the way they make that bouncing ball is they have a bunch of still images that are what we call frames. And so you can see here are six frames up here. And um, if you quickly cycle through those frames, it feels like you have motion. And um, if there are enough frames per second, it'll feel smooth. And so that's the trick here. We wanna have some sort of strategic way when we're building an animation to generate a bunch of, of, of frames at once. And so there's different ways you could do this. Um, since we're familiar with matplotlib, I'm maybe using that. And uh, in matplotlib, they have this animation module. And within that, you have this func animation function. And the idea of func animation is that you, as the programmer, write a function that can draw one frame. And then you pass a reference to the function that you wrote into here. And then Funk Animation will repeatedly keep calling your function to generate all the different frames, and it's gonna stitch them together in this one big animation. So let me head over here to a notebook, and we're gonna get going with this. Um, you can see that I'm importing uh, matplotlib already uh, from matplotlib.animation. I'm importing Funk Animation. Uh, and then finally, you can see that I'm importing this function here, HTML, so I can display HTML with my notebook, and it'll be quickly become quickly apparent why I need to do that. So what we're going to be doing down here is something like this. We are going to be calling func animation and uh, passing in our function, right? That will do something like drawing a frame. And so I'm just going to leave this alone for a while, and uh, I'm going to start by writing that function that can draw a single frame. And our, our animation is going to be very simple. It's going to be um, a number that counts up. That's our goal. And, uh, and so I have to have a frame that draws that. So I can say def draw frame. I can really call it whatever I want. And then I can do some drawing stuff here. And within each of these frames, you can imagine it has some sort of like index, right? You know, the the frame at index zero is the, the beginning of the animation. The frame at index 100 is maybe some way farther through the animation. And uh, so very conveniently, they're going to pass in the frame number for me. And, and since I'm making a number that's counting up as my animation, that's actually going to be what I actually draw on the, on the screen. OK, so when I'm doing this, I actually have to have a figure that I'm drawing on. And I have to create that outside of my frame. Uh, it, it's kind of strange. We've seen before that we have um, these matplotlib figures, and they can have multiple plots within them. And uh, what we're also going to do is we're going to recycle the same figure. We're going to have one figure for a whole animation, but we're going to draw different stuff inside of that figure at different points to construct our animation. So up here I may say fig and ax equals plt dot subplots. And, uh, and then down here, I'm going to draw my counter on top of that frame. So I'm going to say something like ax.text. And remember, I have an x, a y, and then some text here. And, um, and so what I think I'll do is, um, well, let me actually just draw this for a moment. I want to draw it right in the middle. So I'm going to say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. <coughs> um, excuse me. And then for my text, I'm just going to convert my frame number to a string, right? So I'm going to say frame num. And, uh, and I can draw, uh, try drawing it down here. I can say draw frame. And uh, I have to pass in a number, and I can pass in zero. That's really tiny. Let me make it a little bit larger. I'm going to say size equals 72. And, um, and I'd like to be centered, right? So right now it's... Um, aligned at the bottom left corner. So I'm going to say um, vertical alignment equals um, center, and horizontal alignment also equals center. 
and that's nicer. Okay, and and you can see that as I uh, kind of pass over the frames, I'm going to get different numbers here, and that is all good. Okay, so what I want to do now is automatically create all these frames. You can kind of almost imagine like if I if I'm going fast enough, right? If I'm like uh, I, I'm not quite fast enough, but it, if you kind of look at it right, it's almost like it's a video now as I'm flipping through this. So Funky Animation will help me actually do it fast enough. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me look at what I have here. I have to pass in the figure area, right? So I'm going to pass in my figure. And then I'm going to pass in my function, which is just draw frame. And then I have to say how many frames I want to actually have. And I think that defaults to something like um, 100. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do 10. I'm going to do that. And um, just so we can see what's happening, I want to print debug up here. So I do that. And you see that at the moment I do this, it calls draw frame not 10 times, but one time. Right? So that's why I have one debug down here. And, uh, and that's why it's at zero. Whenever I create a funk animation um, object, it just immediately draws um, the zeroth frame. Now, what I'd like it to do is actually go through all 10 frames and, and draw them. And funk animation will not do that until I actually try to save it into some sort of format. And, uh, and so there's different things I could do. I, I'm gonna capture this in a variable. Um, a, a format that I find to be often most convenient is when I say, to HTML5 video. And uh, what this does is it returns a big string with HTML encoded video, right? So I have that giant string there. And since it's so large, I'm just gonna take a slice of it so you can kind of see what's going on. So I'll, I'll take the first, um, I don't know, 2000 characters. So I'm gonna run that. And uh, now what should actually happen uh, is that it actually does all the 10 debugs. Actually, it always does that first one, right? It does that first one here. When I actually try to convert it to HTML down here, it, it does these other ones. So you, so you can kind of see what happens, right? I didn't have any sort of loop here, but I passed in a function reference to funk animation. I wasn't calling my function. I was passing a reference to my function. And that meant that this funk animation could loop 10 times and each time it, it calls this, right? So it's looping 10 times, calling this 10 times to get the 10 different frames. And so then when I'm all done here, uh, I get this big string back and I'm looking at that and I can see that I have a, a video HTML tag. It has a width and a height, um, some other details. And really the interesting part is this source. The source has this data and, and you can see that all this stuff is basically representing uh, representing that video, and it goes much longer than this. I've I've cut it short for a reason, and um, and so I somehow want to get this video um, out now into some sort of format that I could use, right? And so this is this is an HTML string, well, a string containing uh, HTML. And so one option that I could do is I could do something like this. I could say something like with open, you know, like video.html. Want to open that thing for writing as f. If I wanted to, I could say f dot write this, and I and I'd basically capture that uh, that big string inside of that file. And if I open up that file, I would actually see the video. What I think is more convenient for me right now is to instead just try to embed that video inside of my um, inside of my document, and uh, and I can do that. And and the reason why is that. I imported this thing earlier. So let me just give you a little bit of a refresher on how that thing works. Um, and I'm gonna comment this out for now. Uh, but I can say HTML. And remember I can put tags in here if I want. Or I could say like, hey, and then I get that in this really bold font. And, um, and so I'm putting any sort of HTML string here. And guess what? I have an HTML string. It's, it's from right, right from this piece. I'm gonna paste this inside of here. And then I should be able to embed that video directly into this. And, uh, and sure enough, well, I have some sort of video, not necessarily a good video, uh, but a video nonetheless. And, uh, and it's also kind of weird, right? I not only got a video, but uh, I, I somehow ended up with like the last frame of that video down here at the bottom. 
So these are two issues that I have to fix. And I'm going to start with this issue first. How can I uh, get rid of this extra image down here? And the answer is that if I close my figure, then it won't show it up as kind of this extra thing, right? I, I'm not really interested in using the figure to show. I'm just using it, interested in using it as kind of like this canvas where I can um, draw my frames, right? So, so maybe what I could do is something like this. You, you might expect it to be like fig.close. Um, at least in my mind, that makes a lot of sense is the way I would close a figure. Um, it's not that, for whatever reason, kind of strangely, matplotlib made it like this. So if I do that, uh, well, that's now no good because this had to be like the last element of uh, of my cell. So maybe let me put this up above here. Or if I put it up there, and uh, and that seems like a fine place to um, uh, close it. Now it, it's a little feels a little wrong to me to do this. I guess even though it's working, because I'm closing it before I actually draw a bunch of stuff to it. So kind of surprisingly, it's letting me uh, make this work now. But really, it's bad style to be drawing stuff on top of that figure after it's been closed. So, so this piece down here that I just copied, right? I kind of copied this out. I'm gonna paste this up here and put it in a in a variable. And I'm gonna say down here HTML. And uh, and so this will try to do all my work with my fig, right? I'm drawing text on top of uh, of a plot within that fig. So I'm gonna do all my work with it. Then I'm gonna close my figure. And then I'm going to use it to get this HTML here at the end. And, and I think at this point, I don't really need the debug, so I can do that. And, uh, and now I just have that one piece. I don't have the, uh, the extra details below. So that's good. Uh, but the other piece, how do I make sure that I'm not drawing all of these numbers on top of each other? And, uh, and there's two strategies. Um, one, uh, approach one, is to clear the area each time. And, uh, and I can do that like so. I can say ax dot clear area. Is it, does it, I always forget what it's abbreviated for. Is it clear axes or clear area? Whatever, CLA means clear. And so I can do that each time and, and then that would work fine. Maybe I'll just kind of leave this on the same line so it's very clear that it's for that. So I could do that and then I actually get a nice number that's counting up um, by itself, right? I'm starting to get a good animation. Let me just talk about one other approach that I could do. And um, and that would work like this. Whenever I call this AX, that is creating a new um, text object on the figure. And, and so rather than clearing things out and making a new one each time, I have the choice to update the existing one, right? So I, I'm actually gonna do that. And if I'm updating an existing one, I only wanna create it once. And so I should do it out here. Remember that this is gonna get called a bunch of times. So you know if I create it in here, I'm creating 10 of them. If I create out here, I only create one of them. And uh, and so I can actually capture that. Um, I, I can actually capture that in a, in, a, in a variable, right? So I'm gonna do that. And then down here, I can say something like t dot, dot set text. And then I can uh, try to pass in, well, whatever frame number I have. I store my frame number and um, one last detail here, right, is I guess here I haven't even started my frames yet, so there is no frame number. I mean, that's a local variable. Since I move this up here, I don't know. I'll just draw something like that. It's going to be replaced anyway. It doesn't matter, right? Maybe I'll just even leave it empty. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get the same effect now. This time, I only have one text object, and I just kind of keep updating it each time. So those are your two choices, right? This is method uh, method two, which is reuse something. The other method was to say ax.cla. Now, uh, the other detail I want to talk about is how fast this is going. Um, there's currently 10 of these things, and I can make it something like five if I want. Now it only counts up to five. Uh, this is the number of frames I have. The other really important um, thing that I could pass in is not shown here, but it's called interval, right? It's kind of captured in, in this. And the interval is how many milliseconds I want between frames. And so there's a thousand um, milliseconds in a second. So if I say something like a thousand, then it should actually count up one second at a time. And so I have a more realistic um, uh, counter there. And so, so you're gonna get a chance to play with that more, but um, 
I, I kind of have built like the most simple um, animation here, right? It's complete, it's clean, it's counting at the rate I want it to. Um, uh, I'm in the world of animation. I can embed a website if I wanted to. I could also go here to the menu and I could download it. And if I want to download it, I could save it as an MP4 file and, and, and share that with people.